The success of Shinkansen, the first high-speed rail service in the world, opened the new era of railroads, especially in Europa and in North America. As much as to say, defeat Japanese Shinkansen, many unique high-speed trains were planned and tested. Trains in these countries were already running at the speed of 100 miles per hour. Therefore, speed goals of their plans were set over 200 miles per hour. In those days, it was impossible to operate trains over the speed of 200 miles per hour in commercial service by using a conventional metal rail and a metal wheel. To overcome this, many non-adhesive propulsion systems were proposed and tested. Aerotrain, developed by France, is famous. It applied a hovercraft system to a train and decentralized studies were performed. On the other hand, many trials were performed in the United States. A vast land did not allow the high construction cost for grout equipment and scientists choose the linear induction motor system on the conventional rail. This system uses rails and wheels but did not use them for propulsion and brake, so wares of them are very small and can withstand high-speed drive. What is the linear induction motor? When a metal is put close to a metal and moved, a strange phenomenon occurs. They are not contacted and a metal can be non-attractive to a magnet. When a magnet is moved to the right, magnetic fields from the magnet influence the metal. Free electrons in the metal are moved by magnetic fields and electric currents are produced in the metal. A electric current produces magnetic fields and this means that a magnet is created in the metal. When the North Pole approaches, the current creates North Pole in the metal. On the other hand, the opposite side turns into South Pole. North Poles repulse each other and North Pole and South Pole attract each other. As a result, when the magnet moves, the metal plate is dragged and move with the magnet. If magnets are arrayed around the metal cylinder and magnets rotate, the magnet cylinder rotates. Instead of arraying magnets, electric coils can be arrayed around the cylinder. By switching the current of each coil, rotating magnetic fields can be created. This is the principle of an induction motor. Three-phase alternating current is suitable for this purpose and induction motors have been used for a long time and currently indispensable for the train propulsion system. When coils are linearly arranged, a linear induction motor is created. The linear motor currently being developed by JR Tokai is different from this, it is the linear synchronous motor using the interaction between superconducting magnets and conventional electric magnets. The reaction plate was positioned at the center of the conventional track. Electric coils were arranged at the both side of the reaction plate and these coils were mounted within the vehicle. This linear motor was mounted on the prototype vehicle, designed by the Garrett Corporation and tested at the Department of Transportation High Speed Test Center in Pueblo, Colorado. The vehicle length was 56 feet and weight was 54,000 pounds, and called LMRV, Linear Induction Motor Research Vehicle. Its design speed was 250 miles per hour. Onboard generators and external wayside power pickup system were planned to supply the electricity to the vehicle. As the first stage, this prototype mounted the 3,000 horsepower onboard turbo generator. The engine was from the crashed airplane of NASA. Wayside power pickup system was not used at this time because the projet speed, 250 miles per hour, was too fast to use them. In 1971, tests began, manned and unmanned. The speed of manned tests were limited to under 100 miles per hour. 
Total length of the test track was limited to 6.2 mile and it was too short to test 250 miles per hour operation. The track extension to 10 miles were planned but abandoned due to the high construction cost. Instead, amazingly, turbojet boosters were added to the vehicle to achieve this speed within the track in 1973. Two turbojet engines, each had the thrust of 26.7 kilo newton, were mounted at the tail of the vehicle. Addition of nearly 6-ton thrust increased the acceleration remarkably and the desired testing speed of 250 miles per hour achieved easily. After reaching the speed, both turbojet engines were stopped and accelerating and braking tests were repeated using the linear induction motor. Performance measurements of the linear induction motor were continued and finally, the top speed reached 255.7 miles per hour. This is still the world speed record of onboard powered vehicle running on conventional rail. The linear induction motor was expected to have the advantage of using a cheap passive guideway, but to get the sufficient thrust and efficiency, the air gap between motor components must be very small. In the real world, keeping the air gap small enough was quite difficult and the precise construction and control increased the cost. Then the advantage of using a cheap passive guideway decreased and in the late 70s, especially in the United States, as many people were awakened from the fervor of the high-speed ground transportation system, most projects were stopped and this project had also been forgotten about.